Welcome back to another episode on b Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take the plunge into what many feel was the start of the downfall of Sega with their first add-on to the mega-popular Sega Genesis with their Sega CD. Being a huge Sega fan for virtually my entire life, I was that fan that would support Sega on whatever they did 100% without question. With the Super Nintendo gaining more and more market share from the 16-bit Genesis, comparisons were rapid on just who was the better system in the famed console wars. Sega and Nintendo battled it out as consumers were the one who really won as each company would push their creations to the limit to gain any advantage. The SNES absolutely had more colors, vibrant visuals, and better sound overall. These facts eventually led me to buy games like Mortal Kombat 2 on the SNES due to its overall presentation since I could only own one. The one thing about Sega was that they were never afraid of innovation or just to take a chance. Knowing that Nintendo was on their heels, Sega took the plunge on releasing an add-on that would now compete in the sound department but also would be 320 times larger in size than a normal Genesis cartridge and at higher specs than the Super NES. I'll be straight honest on this decision, with the Neo Geo boasting their 300 plus mega arcade games at home in 1990, I felt with CD technology that was so much more in size to work with, we were going to get the best of the best, including Neo Geo quality arcade games. The Sega CD was developed and released by Sega in 1991 in Japan, 1992 in North America, and everywhere else in 1993. The add-on had various enhancements as sprite scaling and rotation to state-of-the-art sound. The Sega CD was to be similar to the TurboGrafx-16 CD-based add-on with a bit more memory, but was changed due to the news of the Turbo Duo with more memory included coming soon. Sega soon shifted to improve the RAM available, but was a major concern as the CD-ROM was too slow to effectively take advantage of the upgrade. Sega of America programmers were cited as the games used more time seeking data than the CD drive was designed to provide. In the end, great advancement with a lot of potential, ultimately bottlenecked by its own CD drive used meant to save money to the overall build. One of the main reasons why we got cartridge ports with more levels and better sound than a complete high graphical overhaul. The drive just couldn't handle the transfer like that. The cost savings that would cost the add-on greatly when developing games. Having modest to poor sales in both Japan and Europe, North America fared much better with the bulk of its sales in its first year, closing in on 1 million units compared to under a quarter of that number from the rest of the world. The system sales would decline further and further with companies like Sega banking on full motion video that rarely gave any gameplay elements besides watching grainy video and a lot of bad acting. The 640 megs allowed for a single CD was mainly used for musical tracks, extra levels, full motion video, and some special effects not that different from the cartridge based game. Victor and I have to make a visit to the augers tonight. A delivery, actually. I am sure you and the boys can take care of everything here. I understand. Good night, Father. Good night, darling. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye, girls. Have fun.
The system grew older with companies getting the hang of the system like Core. It was too late as the add-on was no longer viable with many looking on to the 32-bit era with the Panasonic 3DO, Sega Saturn, Sony PlayStation, and Nintendo 64. I always question the capabilities of the Sega CD to never reach its true capabilities with the full motion video craze that crippled its reputation. I can only wish that if properly equipped, the system could have been and would produce next level gaming besides ports with better music. Although a failed system overall with a mere 2.24 million units sold worldwide, the system was heavily supported until its demise in 1996. Although we never hit the arcade quality 300 plus megabits of power like the Neo Geo, the Sega CD still sported over 200 games and is an add-on that truly changed my gaming experience with games like Sonic CD, Snatcher, Lunar, Internal Blue, and of course my favorite full motion video game of all time, Road of Angry. Take a look at other games for the system that I love to play from Sega's own add-on. Let's say it's easy. Forces Division. I've heard all about your special training in the military, Seed. I hope you'll put it to good use on your new assignment here. What do you think, Gillian? I'll take it.
Oh no, Lunar! That's it for this episode on a look back at my favorite add-on for the Sega Genesis, the Sega CD. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and Greg, take us out of here and I will see you all next upload.